Trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney is more liked than Republican candidate Ron DeSantis. So, I'm going to get to this data here. It is very interesting and really not at all surprising if you exist outside of the internet. But I'm going to get to breaking this down. I'm also going to show you more data later on that goes to bolster this point. But first of all, to intro this whole thing, of course, Dylan Mulvaney is the trans influencer that I discovered because the right wing freaked out about her single Instagram post uh, about Bud Light. And that became a massive talking point for them for, I think, three months now. And Ron DeSantis, of course, is running against Trump to try and become the Republican nominee for president. And he's so far not doing too well. And all of his campaigning and the vast majority of what he's doing in Florida is focused on the woke, which in translation is a lot of anti-trans legislation, a lot of anti-LGBTQ legislation, stuff that is about a lot of basic human rights that Ron DeSantis is against. So before I get to um, the data here, here is Newsweek's headline, and this is actually making a lot of headlines right now. Dylan Mulvaney has higher favorability rating than Ron DeSantis, poll show. So I'm going to get to showing you these polls. First, I want to show you a quick clip here. This is what Ron DeSantis has been focusing a lot of his campaign on. Florida, we fought the woke all across the board. And as president, uh, I will fight the woke in the corporations. I will fight the woke in the schools. I will fight the woke in the halls of Congress. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. We are going to leave woke ideology in the dustbin of history. What an absolute loser. If you weren't keeping track there, that was six wokes within 19 seconds. This is a guy that wants to be president. And the vast majority of his campaigning is focused on woke. It's really embarrassing. It's not just speeches. It's ads. It's every appearance on television. It is, it's ridiculous. And clearly, it is not helping him. Because he's only dropped, I'm going to get to more polling later, showing you just how terribly he's doing. His support has only dropped since he's announced, which usually it's the opposite for most people. DeSantis, uh, not doing too well. Now, on the polling, so I will say these are, as I'll show you, these are two different polls. There so far isn't a poll, for obvious reasons, that has both Dylan Mulvaney and DeSantis in them, because that would be weird. I'm not sure why you would put them up against each other for any reason. <laughs> But uh, that said, these these are well-respected pollsters, and favorability rating is a real thing. So first on Dylan Mulvaney, the first nationwide poll in Mulvaney conducted by the Daily Mail and Tip Poll shows that 50% of the American public who know who Mulvaney is hold a very favorable view of her, 23%, or a somewhat favorable view of her, 27%. 42% viewed her unfavorably, which would give her a net favorability rating uh, of plus 8. So plus 8, keep that in mind, a plus 8. If you want more of a breakdown here, I will link to all this below so you can check out the Daily Mail and their, um, their polling here. But let's get to Ron DeSantis. So Mulvaney is a plus 8. Let's see what DeSantis is. According to 538's National Poll Tracker, DeSantis currently has an average favorability rating of 35.5% with an unfavorable rating of 45.9%, which would give him a net favorability score of minus 10.4. DeSantis has not had an average approval rating as high as the 50% Mulvaney has in the Daily Mail poll uh, or survey at, this, uh, at any point this year, with the 2024 hopeful seeing his popularity start to fall in recent months. So not only is DeSantis a minus 10.4%, with Mulvaney a plus eight, which would give a spread of almost 20 points between the two. But DeSantis has never hit 50% in favorability. This is not a popular politician. The fact that we are even discussing or even seeing DeSantis' name as much as we are in the press and in discussions around the Republican primary is all a design of the media that is trying to push him. Fox News was really trying to get DeSantis out there, really trying to push him up there because they wanted to get past the, the Trump era, and it has not been working. And now you're seeing Fox kind of go in reverse and try to start to talk more about Trump again because uh, focusing on DeSantis has not helped uh, their ratings in any way. Now, the DeSantis breakdown here is really just amazing to see. 
So this is his favorable versus unfavorable rating. And 538 takes all polls and then weighs them according to how accurate they've been historically. So 538 generally is, is actually the most accurate pollster when it comes to this kind of thing. But um, DeSantis announced his his uh, campaign at the end of May. So around here sometime. So he's sitting at already not doing too well at 42% unfavorable. But after he announced, it got even worse for him. So his favorability dropped even further after announcing. And he's now sitting at a 45.9 unfavorable to 35.5. This is not a good trend for him. And you're even seeing some high profile donors that were once backing DeSantis now sort of starting to back off the idea that DeSantis is the next guy. It's uh, it's going to take a miracle to turn this around. It would take an entire redo of his campaign, what he's focusing on. It's going to take a lot. It would also take DeSantis being a better politician. He lacks charisma. He is not a good politician. He's, he's not a great orator. Compare that to Trump, who essentially is a right-wing comedian. Trump has the ability to, you know, capture a crowd. DeSantis does not have that. So even if they change their campaign strategy and their focus, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference because when it comes to conservative voters, they want to be entertained and Trump entertains them. Now, a little more on just this, what DeSantis' focus is on and how terrible it's doing for him. This came out today. Focus groups, Minnesota swing voters reject DeSantis culture wars. So this is a, uh, a group of... It's a handful of people that Axios is following, but it goes to show this idea of the swing voter and what they're influenced by based on what they are seeing from these campaigns. So the Sanders positions on LGBTQ issues aren't landing with a group of Minnesota swing voters, with several describing him as a wannabe dictator in our latest focus groups. Going on to uh, right here. No one in their focus group said they're more likely to vote for DeSantis after being shown a video shared by his campaign online that portrays him as an anti-LGBTQ crusader. All but three described the video as troubling. Four voters admitted they simply didn't know enough about the governor to offer an opinion, but the rest who knew him didn't like him. Minnesota swing voters fall into two, ca uh, two camps. Either they don't know what DeSantis is saying, or they don't like it. <laughs> so... This is just, this has been a complete failure by Ron DeSantis. Now, you could argue, well, Trump also is, at times, bringing up the woke and saying these things. The difference with Trump is that he's been president before. He's had a lot of different focus. He's not just focused on this one thing. And he's also a much better campaigner. Trump's popularity is not because of him mentioning woke or him being anti-trans. It's because Trump is just generally a character. And conservatives... Uh, conservative voters like that character. Now, more on just how incorrect this this whole push is in terms of even just... It's wrong based on, of course, human rights. That should be obvious. We don't need polls to tell us that. But if you're just looking at the politics of it, in terms of winning elections, it's also very dumb to try and be anti-trans and focus on this issue as your, your, uh, your go-to. So Data for Progress here. This is a recent poll from, I believe, March the end of March. So even Republicans think the amount of anti-LGBTQ plus legislation is excessive political theater. So I've shown this poll before in other videos, but you can see the data here. When even Republicans think it's too much, <laughs> like you're going too far. Another uh, result here, Americans believe that transness is natural and normal, not a woke invention. So you see a majority of all likely voters, 57% believe that and 11% don't know but only 33% think it's because it's a woke convention. But still, look at the majorities here. So even, even if you want to try and, and poke holes in the comparison of polls here, because it isn't the same poll with Mulvaney and DeSantis, you can look at other data that supports these issues and showcases that the majority of people think transness is natural and that this focus on anti-trans or anti-LGBTQ legislation is excessive. Now, a couple last things, because they tried this strategy before. 
And I also covered this in a, in a more recent video. Republicans doubled down on anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric in the midterms. It wasn't a winning platform. And just one paragraph on that. According to exit polling from an LGBTQ plus advocacy organization, the Human Rights Campaign and Data Analytics Firm Catalyst, voters ranked LGBTQ plus issues as low on their list of priorities for 2022. More than half, 52%, chose inflation and 29% picked abortion. Transgender health care and participation in sports came in last on the list of issues with just 5%. So this is not clearly affecting most people because most people are not trans. Why would they be focused on this issue? So either way, if, and if there's going to be people that are going to vote purely based on your hatred towards trans people, you're not going to win those people over with any... I don't know, logical push for anything that's rational and would help them in any way. So those people are just completely lost to, the, to you know, crazy town. So to focus on this is just, a, it's, it doesn't make any sense. For Democrats, it does make more sense because there's a whole group, and I showed this in, in a previous video. There's a lot of Gen Z, LGBTQ uh, plus individuals who want to see their issues better represented by the Democratic Party. And they're the, the uh, slice of voters that are less likely to vote, but would be more likely to vote if their issues are spoken to. So Democrats would actually benefit by focusing more on this issue and discussing the human rights around this, whereas Republicans lose when focusing just on this issue, or at the very least, it doesn't help them. I, you know, I try to communicate this the best I can. I think the people that need to hear this most aren't hearing it. People like the Ron DeSantis campaign <laughs> that really need to move the hell on conservative media that needs to move the hell on. This is not a winning issue for them. You can keep trying to push it, but it's not moving the needle.